Um, I want to just say it was cool. I I think I think, it's a, I think every, it's a great name, you know, Sangria on the Berg, uh, Fredericksburg Road. It's the only Berg in San Antonio. Oh my God, I've been you didn't know, did you? Yeah, it's time. okay. It's okay. If if you, even if you think you're not helping, you're helping. Yeah, we don't realize that one meal at your restaurant helps so much. One times bunch but like that one time go to your even if it's once a month once a week whatever um that one meal helps she was the first one to ever call me chef and i felt like i wanted to correct her to be very honest with you i was like hey like i'm not a chef i didn't tell her that but i I felt like very uncomfortable um being called that because i I didn't think i'd done enough you know i didn't go to school i didn't know this but yeah can i ask a stupid question now that we're talking about sure is a chef a real thing and why is it a thing Somebody wanted us here, so sorry. No, no, you're good, man. Hey, welcome to Too Hard, Too Fast podcast. In this episode, I'm here with Caesar Cepeda. He is the owner of Sangria on the Burge here in San Antonio, Texas. We're going to talk about how it got started, how he decided to be a chef, the journey through that, and then um, we'll talk about food and culture a little bit. Sure. But Caesar, thanks for being on. Uh, thanks for having me. Of course, man. Uh, we are going to see people walking behind us, working, and you might hear some restaurant noises. But let's sit back, buckle up, let's go too hard, too fast. Hey. This is Caesar Zapeda with Sangria on the Berg. I'm going too hard, too fast. San Antonio, come out and eat. All right, Caesar. first question, just because we are in San Antonio, um, I feel like I have to go through the local questions. So are you originally from San Antonio? I'm actually from a little town called Banchetti, and it's close to Corpus. Um, and I moved here in 99 to go to UTSA. You moved here in 99. Oh, so you're, yeah, you're technically from San Antonio. I feel like I'm San Antonio. It's, it's, it's like a second home. Nice. Uh, so that, that negates my second question, because uh, the second question from San Antonio people are what high school you went to. <laughs> but it's all right, because I'm not originally from San Antonio either. I've been here since 05, just also as well to go to college. I went to Our Lady of the Lake. Um, so, yeah, I didn't go to high school here either. <laughs> so that question is gone. Um what are we drinking here? This is good. This uh, is a, a mandarin and melon agua fresca. So we change our agua fresca every day. A lot of things here change. Our menu is constantly evolving and, and uh, changing. So we just kind of, what fruit do we have on hand and we make something special. That is delicious. It is awesome. I'm gonna, uh, this is something you can order here at the yep. restaurant. Now, that is delicious. Any, do you drop a little bit of alcohol every once in a while? You can. Some people do every yeah. day. <laughs> Perfect. No, that would be, that is extremely delicious. So, before Sangria on the Burge, did you think that you were going to be a chef? Uh, or how did that how did that decision come about? You know, I, I always wanted to go to culinary school. And um, I had a scholarship to UTSA. And so, my dad was like, no, you're taking the scholarship. Like, because, you know, why would you not, right? It's free education. So, I took that and I, I cooked my whole life. My my uncle was a chef. My grandfather did a lot of weddings and quinceaneras. And so, my, my grandma did, you know, tamales for everybody in Corpus Christi. So, that was always kind of in my blood. Not really as a restaurateur, yeah. but but more of a, just the love of cooking and sharing and, you know, uh, breaking bread with your family is kind of, you know, how you show love. So, um, that has always been in my life. Um, I wasn't sure at first when it came to, I wanted to open a nightclub. I thought it'd be fun. It was like, you know, I was young and stupid yeah. and, yeah. <laughs> and wanted to go out and all that stuff. But, um, you know, as we uh, started going, I, I, I kind of fell in love with cooking and I worked with some, some really good chefs that kind of showed me, you know, the right way to do it. Uh, you know, I worked at Tony Roma's through college and, um, you know, Tony Roma was great, but it probably showed me more of the not, the wrong way to do it. And I really wanted to uh, to establish uh, a food culture in San Antonio. I love the direction it was going. I was mm-hmm. like, man, my what the, what's in my head will will really work here. So, um, 
it took time longer than I thought. I thought I was going to do it in college. No, it took me about 19 years to open my own, my own restaurant. So it takes time, but uh, it, was, it was definitely a, a great experience. So when you said you went to your TSA, were you, you weren't studying culinary. What were what were you studying? Uh, I studied business management, so I have business a degree in business management. Also, oh, well, that helps then. Yeah, right? sure. I mean, you know, kind of working the back end, working you know the the numbers and having all that make sense is is actually a huge part of this. You know, I'm kind of glad I didn't, you know go to culinary schools i think you know, i think that's in you i think it's, it's part of your 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 heart your right. soul um cooking and, and knowing flavors and all that so i never went to culinary school it was kind of in me but the the business numbers are very important and you know i kind of take that for granted that i know that but uh you know a lot of sh a lot of chefs are trying to do this don't realize the importance of that and and uh following those numbers and making sure everything makes financial sense yeah that i think that's probably what hurts some other it can hurt anybody you know you, you do open you have that passion in you for cooking and well well that brings me to the thought that i have a bunch of i shouldn't say i have a bunch of friends and like i'm just calling them out but I, i've had friends to where they say i love cooking and i think this is what i'm gonna do uh i'm gonna make a career change to cook, uh, to be a chef but they never it never happens or or the, it happens and and i've never had anybody actually happen and, and then fail but you see other businesses where that passion's there, but it fails. I know everything's tough nowadays, but um, I wonder if it's that background of, you know, you know how to cook, you have a palate for it, but the business side of it, is that the trickier part of I guess you have to really understand that this is a this is a love business this is a you know have to be in love with, with what you do um, because for a long time you don't make any money and you know and, and financially said if you, if you don't have you know let's say a spouse that, that can help with financial financially um, if you don't have um, a little bit of savings um, but that can go very quick especially if something crazy like a pandemic happens right right don't plan on that you yeah. don't you don't know that that's coming you you uh, it was no book for that right there's no degree in that uh, so if you don't love this, it's probably the wrong thing to do. And I see a lot of people, I know exactly what you're talking about. Some people that, you know, I know people that are lawyers or, or construction workers all over the place. I, mean, I have these people with these dreams mm -hmm. of opening a restaurant because we all go out to eat. That's one thing we all have done our whole life, right? We've gone out to eat. We've, um, with our parents or something like that, said, oh, I can do this. You know, I can make a good brisket or I can make a good this or that. Um, well, that's cool. Can you make 20 of them? Can you make 250 of them? exactly the same you know everybody kind of thinks oh i got a recipe for this and i you know i'm really good at this like okay well it, it's kind of like the monotony of doing it over and over and yeah. over and the same thing is is that you know initially it's very exciting and doing it almost the same the every perfect because that's yeah. what the, that's what everybody consistency is everything mcdonald's isn't that good they're consistent as hell yeah. like they're very good all the time at what they do you don't go you know there for your wedding yeah no but a lot of people go there every day yeah. and so consistency is a huge part of this game and the moment you're not man now now the public will bash you like, yeah, yeah, oh man it's unbelievable like one day you have one off day not in our industry you don't have an off day no. because uh because everybody's a food critic yeah everybody's a critic <laughs> everybody's a, a home chef everybody's a food network guru and and uh, everybody has a voice yeah. and it's uh it's really loud when it's not good it's really quiet when it's great you know it's kind of interesting but it's, yeah. it's true so you learn to navigate through that and you learn to read them but not freak out um there's some things we do wrong absolutely yeah. we're not perfect yeah. but I've learned to read them. Don't react too much. I used to react a lot. If, if I if I bashed you, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but you're not going to you're not going to beat me at words. By right. the way, I, I write for a living, so oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> good luck with that. No, but isn't it um, the good thing about food that if you do make a mistake with food, it's um, something you can definitely understand. It will because there's people me. <laughs> I'll include myself. I'll make a really nice whatever. But ask me to do it again. I have no idea what I put in it. I was just like, meh, meh. And then, yeah. well, this is here. Let's try it. And then my wife was like, this is really good. What did you do? I have no idea. Uh, well, I'll, I'll kind of try it again. But with, when you make a mistake, you if you're knowing what you're doing, you can uh, say, okay, I'll avoid that or put less of that. Or make a mistake and it tastes really good. Then you can just continue doing that. There's some really good mistakes that happen. Yeah. There's some leaving stuff, you know, 
too long they're like hey this, this is pretty good um there there's all kinds of things whether it be a sauce where you at the end you're like it's not balancing you add a little sugar and you're like hey man that worked you know and you never really like you never know that uh remembering is great you know uh, obviously <laughs> if you're gonna do i'm really bad i'm really bad about it i don't write stuff down i'm like you know all my chefs that i worked with it, i'm like ah it's up here yeah. it's over. i got yeah. it um and i usually remember um i think food if, if you study it enough like i just studied i read a lot i read a lot yeah. and read and watched videos and we're in the we're in the world where you can you want to learn something if you don't, that's your fault. That's mm. the the YouTube's out there. Everything's out there. You want to learn it, you can learn it. Books are out there everywhere. So um, I really, really learn just food. Like, okay, what works for what things, you know? And and so I have a general idea, and then I just okay, who am I cooking for? You know, who you know what? Who's the who's the palate? Are they you know no offense, are they really old? Okay, I gotta chill out on the salt. I gotta chill mm. out on the spice level. You know, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know. Honestly, brunch a bunch of women. I gotta chill out on the heat. You know, I gotta make sure kids okay. I have to, you know, watch yeah, what I do yeah. here. Not too dark, not too this. So you really learn all those things that um, help you be consistent and help you uh, re- remember, <laughs> hopefully remember how you did it that that, that, that time sounds, when it was magical. That sounds hard just listening to that because I'm thinking I'm cooking with what I like to cook, um, but not even thinking that's right. You know, there's a different groups of people that walk into your restaurant and you have to make sure that what you're serving fits their palate. No, because I definitely I don't like a lot of salt. Yeah. I don't I don't use a lot of salt. But um, there's people that you know do or or like you know like you said different palates. Um, I can't even fathom just thinking that alone. You have to understand you're not cooking for you. And I'm a I'm a salty dude. Like I love salt. I, I have, okay, it's not for me. How to do this? So I usually like go on the safe side of less salt and just add, you know. Obviously, I have people that are in the industry all around me. Like you know, all these servers have been in the industry forever. They develop a palate. I have a team back there, so I make sure to use them and understand that I want to make this good for the greater people not me yeah. a lot of times it's not about me like it's really not okay what's going to be palatable i like spicy i like salty i like all these a lot of umami i really love big bites you know but not everybody does yeah. so you have to really think about that and it, it, it is it is kind of hard you have to make sure that um that even though you like a certain thing if 90 percent like it the other way you have to do it the other way so so uh going back to your journey um after college that's when you made the decision to to uh, i'm sure you were still pursuing the food but when was it like cemented this is where i'm this is where i'm going uh it was probably at the end of college you know i had my uh little capstone you know kind of a internship at at where i was working at tony robos and i did all the the management training and all that and um (laughs) you know this was actually part of my funny story but um I looked in, I looked at doing the numbers and I'm, you know, we had these like, you know, this website thing that we entered everything in and I kept ending the numbers. I, am I doing something wrong? Like, I think that I'm wrong. I think that I'm doing it. I'm failing at some points. Like you know, user error is huge, you know, did yeah. I, and so I went to my GM and I said, Hey, uh, dude, we're losing our ass. Like we're losing so bad. Like, am I, am I doing this wrong? He's like, Nope, we're closing in two weeks. Oh, dang. <laughs> I was like, Oh no! Mm. You know, like, <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I, th- I think he's joking. Yeah, he's yeah. Like, like, and I just, I did the numbers, and we are losing every plate. Like, we're not. It's th- making financial sense. He's mm-hmm. like, yeah. And so, um, luckily, I was part of the closing crew, and I, so, another little story. I, um, I bought a house on Tuesday. I finished management training on Thursday. I graduated on Friday, and my restaurant closed on Saturday. Wow. <laughs> that was my wow. week of graduation. So, um, you know, I was like, oh, man, I have to figure this out. So, um, And also, like, it also t- told me a lot, like, even the bigger companies that you think have it together don't have it together. Yeah. Like, they're not their they're menu, and we get kind of caught in this price thing where you might not be charging enough for what you're doing. So math is a huge part of this, and I really knew at that moment that, hey, like, I think I can do this. I understand why why we failed. I understand you know what we have to do to make it work. It took me years after that. I thought I was going to do it faster than I did, but I knew that I wanted to work with the best. I knew that I wanted to work with people that maybe pe- other people told me not to work with. Like, uh, you know, don't work for her. She's mean. I was like, well, that, she's successful. I want Lisa Wong. 
she's successful. So many people told me not to work with her. Yeah. Like, no, I want that. I want someone to beat me up and make get me ready for this. Right. And Bruce Auden, another you know, ma- amazing chef, amazing friend, Rick, great guy. <laughs> didn't have a good reputation. Don't work for him. You know, he's mean. He's this and that. Like, I learned. I was with them for one year, and I learned so much. Um, Cappy Lawton. I went over there for 12 years and worked with him for 12 years. Everybody said, oh, he's this, he's that, he's that. Like, that's what I want. Like, that's the next level. So everyone was like, like, my master's. I didn't go back to school. You know, I finished with my bachelor's. I wanted to go back to school, but I also wanted to learn this trade. So my master's, and then, you know, I feel like I have a PhD working for Gappy. Like, you know, this is how he's lasted 40 years in this industry here. Yes. There's a science to it. There's a way to do it. So that was, I knew in and college, I like but I knew, drive. yeah, the dri- I mean, you got it. You're in your restaurant. Right. I can't say that enough. You have to be in your restaurant. Yeah. I know that sounds very simple, right? That sounds like, of course, no. Like a lot of people, you know, I've done it too. I've done it too. Where I, 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 I'm not here enough, and I can, I can tell the cultures. The cultures change. You, you are the culture. Mm. You are the, you are here. You, you are the place. Up. So, um, trying to do that, I just knew that. I knew the direction. I didn't know exactly what I was going to do. I didn't know it was going to be sangria, but I knew the direction was going to be towards opening my own restaurant. Um, going back to a little bit on, on you know, taking into account to people. Um, you were talking to, to you know, one of your employees and it kind of hit me like, I don't know, I, I, I can't even, just gathering, she asked you, how much do I need to make, you know, and I'm thinking, man, I don't even know how many people are going to come through the door, but you guys have your numbers, uh, things like that, and I'm not going to ask you to share your numbers or anything like that, but um, just, to, just to plan for the day or for the next few days. How how hard is that? How do you how do you learn that? Because you know what I Google every time. I Google how many fajitas, how many pounds of fajitas do I need for four people? <laughs> the number never changes, but I still have to Google how many fajitas I need. <laughs> you, it's it's funny because you know we, we talked a little about or we we talked about prep meals a little bit and, and that part side of it, and that's a very specific number. Right, these people want four point five ounces of protein. I have other people that want six ounces of protein. You know. People have different measurements, you know, uh, a cup of broccoli, like so all those numbers, they don't lie for caterings. um, A human being eats about 12 to 16 ounces. I like I know that. So I'm going to make this much protein. It's not a gas work. It's like 200 people. They're going to eat this much protein. Uh, Let's say six ounces each protein. I'm going to do the math. I'm also going to do the math on what you're going to lose, what you're going to trim. So I know I'm going to lose 30 percent, 20 percent. So I do the math on that. So I know exactly how much protein to purchase. And that's um, that's kind of an everyday thing. My wife's an accountant. And like at math, I got killer. (laughs) <laughs> like, it's just it's, I'm mad. Yeah. Like, it's constant yeah. math. You know, my son is like, dude, how did you do that? Like, I don't know. Like, I do it every day. It's a very because I go by ounces, right? Ounces right. per pound, and I divide it some somehow, and I get what I need to do. But that's kind of a constant thing where you have really good people back there, and our prep guy is is making sure, okay, we have this much, we need this much. The chef is ordering, so it's a it's not just one person. It's multiple people. Like, you don't want to order a six case of chicken when you need two. Yeah, that chicken's gonna go wasted. bad. Yeah. It's perishable. Money and wasted. Food wasted. It's not like you're building in a car right the, the metal will sit there mm-hmm. it'll wait for you to the, the chicken won't sit there right. it's, it's bad in a week it's bad right. and so like it's real and honestly that's where another lot of restaurateurs mess up is that they don't get those numbers down they don't they don't adjust they don't you know and sometimes it's it's you know you might need 20 pounds a case is 40 pounds oh what do you do um, maybe you run a special to move that other 20 pounds maybe you do something you have to have something in your head that I'm gonna okay I'm gonna run a burger on Wednesday that's gonna have chicken plate on I, I know what I'm gonna do to use that up yeah if you don't have a plan it's all gonna go wasted and you're not gonna be here very long so it's a uh, it's not an exact science it's a moving target but uh you know with with a team that's really good and with you doing inventory and, and looking at everything and keeping your eyes on the game like it, it can be done but uh, it's not easy so it's not easy at all how how long has sangria been open we've been open a little over seven years seven years so that's that's a huge milestone um right i well I know there's the the three year milestone that you know everybody mm-hmm. talks about. Most businesses don't last more than three years. Um, can you kind of share a little bit about those three years? Man, it's really funny because um, ours is a little bit different. Um, <laughs> I I don't know why. You know, I I I knew it would be good, and I'll be honest with you. The first two weeks, I was like, "What did I do?" 
I messed up. Oh, really? I had marketing budget. I didn't have anything. We were we were broke. It took forever to get our, our the, the city's permits and all that through, and all the stuff you have to get to open. Oh my god, we literally had no money for marketing. No money. We had. I need people in here because I need to start making money. So first couple of weeks, and then I had staff that was waiting on me to open. Oh, and you you're you're proud that they that they follow you, right? So you're right. like, we got to get open because we need. I need to start paying these people. Um, I didn't have a lot of money to pay them to not do anything when we have money coming in. So um, I, it was really hard. And then it's strange because once we opened, it was like, boom. And not not immediate, but a lot better than than most restaurants. I hear some you hear horror stories like, oh, the first year you have nobody coming in. Well, it wasn't like that. It took us a couple of weeks, but it when it hit, it hit. Yeah. And it was like, oh, you know. What do you think made the hit? Um, I want to just say it was cool. I, I think I, it's I a great think every, name. it's a great name, you know, Sangria on the Berg, uh, Fredericksburg Road. It's the only Berg in San Antonio. Oh my God, I've been you didn't know, did you? Yeah, it's time. okay. It's okay. I don't, I don't know. And I was, I was okay. I, I have a little bit of a, like oppositional defiance, and maybe it's a lot. So uh, this whole time, I, I thought it was Berg, but I wanted to say Berg just, just to be dumb. But I was like, I'm not going to go and disrespect them, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> the whole time, I'm like, don't say Berg. Don't say Berg. And then I think, well, what's a Berg? <laughs> hey, I've had people work here for two years and not know what Berg meant. I was like, well, it's Fredericksburg. <laughs> Fredericksburg. It's, it's right there. It's on Fredericksburg. It's, it's the only Berg in San Antonio. And I thought location specific. You know, the whole goal was to open another one, yeah. um, you know, eventually. And actually, I was really close right when that pandemic hit. Like, I was, I'm so glad I didn't. But. I was really close. It was. It was like, okay, we get this going. I have property. They they want me there, and, and I didn't. Um, so it was kind of like sangria, and then location on the second line. Um, and I'll, I, you know, I'll have to say, like, I think a huge part of this, and, and this is Cappy and Susie Lawton teaching me how to write. And restaurant writing is different than regular writing, right? Yeah. You're, you're you're not writing complete sentences and all that, but you're writing it to be sexy, right? Mm -hmm. Grabs you, has to grab mm -hmm. you. You have a few lines to make someone say, hmm, I want to eat that. Like, of all these things they could have ate, or all these restaurants they could have ate, that sounds really good. So it sounded good. Let's, let's start there. Like, the the, the, the menu sounded good, and I knew how to write. And and I, a Which lot of times... Right? I mean, I, there's some menus that I... I, I the, the title of the food sounds great, but when they write the description... It sounds so boring and basic. I'm like, I'm going to pay $13 for this. Like, it's got to grab you. Yeah. It has to be sexy. It has yeah. to have that, like, those words. Mm, there's words that in our language that just, like, sound good. Um, or the a word, photo. If you don't, oh, if you photos, can't, if everything you can't write you know, a good description, put a photo because more likely I'm just going to look at the photos and like, that looks amazing. I'm going to get so it. So photos have taken over writing, you know, because a photo, Instagram, you know, Facebook, yeah. everything now, that has taken over. Videos are, of course, they're <laughs> even worse now. So, but um, initially, you know, you read that, that menu like, oh, man, that sounds good. And um, I've always been, you know, a kind of person that can write it and then develop it. So there's a lot of things that I've written that I've never made. And when I make it, I'm like, yep like exactly how I, my head said it was going to taste there's really some weird things i've never tasted everybody's like oh it's so funny i know this is the wrong thing to say but i've literally written it made it and i and like i knew it was going to be and everybody's like oh man that's amazing it just bounces so well and i was like and i'll think like six months later like dude i never tasted that what i never that's crazy right i, I was like I've never tasted that meal, like or the whatever taco, or you know, everything's kind of like a dish, yeah. right? A, a, a taco is a dish in a, in a wrap, right? It's it's a whole dish, it's a whole plate in a bite or yeah. two or three or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I've written it, and I never tasted it. I've always tasted it in my head, and it's kind of a strange thing. And a lot of people are like they love it. I was like, man, how do you do that? Like I don't know. Like that. So writing is a big part of of restaurants, and so I wrote sounded good. I think it had a cool factor. I, I really think that's important. Sorry, I, re I really think that's important. I really think that uh, it has to be cool, man. It has to be approachable. It has to be not scary. I think a lot of times people use words in their menus that if I'm looking it up, yeah, it's a problem. That oh, means yeah. the average person has no clue what you're talking about. And whether it be, you know, uh, two, you know, chef technical terms yeah. I mean, let's say they might know some stuff but they don't know what you know <laughs> they yeah. don't know looking up these exactly. a lot of them maybe they'll google it maybe they'll look it up maybe they won't order that at all
be only because they don't understand the term you know i saw say san antonio like too much spanish where, where people like get scared of like oh i don't even know what we coche is like <laughs> and they're not even gonna look at when they look at other like oh yeah, yeah, that's kind of yeah. scary so find words to make it sound sexy like is yeah. a huge part of what we do and i think people just gravitate towards it there's there's a lot of simple fancy words that can be used oh yeah the word seared the word seared makes people salivate Mm. MIT study like literally makes people like mm, yeah. see here it's yeah sexy. and you may not <laughs> may not know what it really is but like it kind of gives you like it's it almost sounds like what uh, those words that they're words but they're also the same sound that like you know like it's that meat is searing like it's making that sound yeah. yes it's and that's why uh, uh, some certain words like that so I think also I think medical center had a void let's be honest I, I don't think there was a lot of things around here like what we were bringing had the full bar had a fun funky bar the flights the flights were a huge thing um instagram sangria worthy. flights yeah sangria uh, margarita uh mimosa mm. huge part of our success huge part of like the instagram ability the 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 facebook all that where people started it's all about girls man sorry has nothing nothing to do with no you. man zero to do with you it's about you know women come out to eat with their, each other and they're a lot more they're a lot busier they're just better at posting they're better mm. all that so if it's instagram more and beautiful i think that's a huge part and this this area didn't have a lot of cool stuff so and there's a lot of usa's right down the street medical centers right down the street like 50 something thousand people follow Fredericksburg every day go across it every day so i think there was a void that i just filled and it was just the right time right place at the right time yes because there's a there's a lot of businesses here but not a lot of restaurants especially uh good catchy restaurants uh, there's a lot of good ones and i don't want to talk about some that <laughs> uh, but i'm just saying like there's there's like pockets uh, and I guess there is. now it has been more i used to live around the area a long time ago and it was always like, there's nothing here. I'm gonna, and then I would have to drive out. But yeah, that filling that void, it's pretty cool. And I can't believe I'm still. I'm gonna think about that all week. The it's okay. I, I was gonna correct. I should have corrected you, but I've had so <laughs> many people do that. I kind of just go with it because I don't want to correct it. But it's uh, Sangria on the Berg for Fredericksburg. No, and you know what? Correct us. Correct all of us. Anybody. I, this is one thing that I, from from my name alone, I, my my name is Jorge. You know, uh, that's my real name, but I, some, I, I, everybody calls me George, and I'm cool with that. But uh, so a lot of people have, since starting the podcast, they told me, stop introducing yourself as George, introduce yourself as Jorge. Now, if somebody else wants to call you different, um, you know, correct them. It's like, hey, but if it's it's hard on them to say Jorge, George is fine. But gotcha. always correct them first. And let them know. No, my name's Jorge. Gotcha. I, I, like, always, always correct. Like, it's not. Th- I, I wouldn't have felt bad. I wouldn't have been offended gotcha. at all. I would have had the laugh. I was like, I can't believe this whole time. <laughs> so, yeah, man, correct us. That's that's. Uh, it's so dumb because it's really Fredericksburg. It's the one of the biggest streets in San Antonio. It really is. It's <laughs> huge. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So, on the sangria flights, yeah, obviously, sangrias in the name. Yep. Uh, you're having sangrias. Um, is you think that's uh, some of the things that like uh, brought people in? Like, because to me, I'm thinking bar when I when I first saw it or saw the name. It's a bar, and then that led me to oh, there's good food here. Um, so, do you think people initially come because they think it's just a bar, or do they know that it's a food place too? You know, I, I think it's about fifty fifty. There's there's you know sangria is obviously the name, and we've had people call if they can bring in their kids. Like yeah, it's not it's not a bar. You know, I always thought of it as as a bar that has really good really good food. You know, uh, and um, selling selling the flights, selling sangria, selling margaritas, uh, doing all that on this side because I started in the in the bar. Yeah, that's where I, that's where I started. You know, before you know in college I worked I was a bartender, so that was uh you know. A huge way I can make a little bit of you know, a lot of money, a little bit of time, and kind of work for my schedule, right? So, but also learn there like it's balance. It's balance of the drinks has to balance. Can't be too sweet. Can't be too mm-hmm. sour. Can't be all this. It's directly like food, right? So, um, think the bars a draw, and then there's other people that you know. You'll be surprised at lunch when people are eating here and they're like, and they're talking about if they're going to drink, you know, and they're like, sangria doesn't count, right? I know. <laughs> and so I've always wanted to make a shirt and say that sangria doesn't count. Um, because they're at I lunch and they're fun. like, it, it doesn't count, right? Yeah. It's not really, it's yeah. not really drinking. It's fruit. And so <laughs> it's, like a, it's, a, it's a salad is what it is. Um, so, um, you know, and then, you know, and I just think the creativity of the menu and, you know, I, uh, 
you know, I, again, I didn't go to culinary school. I'm, I'm extremely creative. And, um, you know, you have this, this, all this food, which is like paint, right? And you're just, and you're just painting something. So I use all that to make really cool stuff. Um, and, you know, I'm kind of lucky in that, that sense. I, 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 I love the fact that people come in here and appreciate the food and other people come in here and just appreciate the drinks. Um, I hope they leave happy either way. Yeah. Uh, not going to culinary school uh did did you well you said you had you had a lot of good mentors yeah like, um but you can't teach palate right i i or i don't maybe you feel different but i just feel like i can get better at tasting different things but i don't think i have like like if you if you give me a a, a, a bowl of something or a plate or something and you ask me to figure out kind of deconstruct the dish i would not be able to do that i was like that's chicken and that's meat or you know that's all i got for you i can tell you if it's salty or spicy but i can't tell you what ingredients went in there do you think you can do that oh yeah Yeah. um i i gotta say like there's the word chef right I, I didn't go to culinary school. So for a lot of time, even when I opened this place up, I, I was really uncomfortable with being called chef. I, I don't think I was worthy. I didn't think I was, I did enough. Mm. Um, and actually Roma from from the from the news, from Great Day SA, she was the first one to ever call me chef. And I felt like I wanted to correct her. To be very honest with you, I was yeah. like, hey, like, I'm not a chef. I didn't tell her that, but I, I felt like very uncomfortable um, being called that because I, I didn't think I'd done enough. You know, I didn't go to school. I didn't know this. But, you know, after all this time working with people, I've worked with some really, really educated chefs. I'm talking about around the world, France. They've done all this stuff. And, and they, they can't create flavors. I got to say, I can create flavors. Um, I'm not probably technically sound. I know there's a lot of people I've, I've, I've watched people. And the, the great thing about this also is I'm constantly learning, constantly learning how to get better at this game. Um, but I've met some really, really educated people that can't cook. <laughs> yeah. Love, you know, great people, man. They, yeah. they can break down whatever. They can do a lot of technical things. But as far as like creating a dish and creating a memorable flavor, it's very challenging for them. I gotta say, I, I have that. that. That's a gift. Like yeah. not everybody can do it. Like and, I, and some great. I've worked with some uh, with and for and around some really great chefs. I'm just impressed at how the hell they can create such an amazing flavor. Um, and they did it in their head first. And I think that's that's a huge part of it is really understanding that. So it took me a long time. And I uh, just literally just recently, um, you know, my my new executive chef. Knox, a buddy of his said, you know, you know, he's not a real chef, right? And he's like, well, he fooled me because I've had his food and, you know, <laughs> he can cook. Um, so, and so, because I did come from front of the house and I did, was a GM for 12 years. And so, you know, then I even worked on a, a lot of the food at, at the Fondo on Main as well. But um, it, I've, I've been nominated for best chef, like three or four years in a row, nice. and you know, Congrats. all yeah, thank you. But it's weird. It's still it's still weird to me right now because I still think I'm on I'm, I'm learning and I'm growing. So you think do you think the word chef is it's one of those like you you have to have a degree for it or no? I mean, technically not. But is it one of the, is it thought of as that from other people? Like you know how you can only call yourself doctor unless you're yeah. actually a PhD or Dr. Dre. <laughs> yeah i i it's it's interesting and it really is because i i know some of the i know some of the best cooks i've ever met in my life ladies that have prepped in the back made food that just makes you think of home and just amazing mm-hmm. that ratatouille moment food and they're not technically a chef yeah. they're some of the best damn cooks i ever met in my life like i I put them up against most chefs that i know yeah and so i think there's always people like that but it's more of the chef is not just creating you're writing menus you're can you fix food can you come in and take what you said take this something's wrong with it chef fix it and taste it and in your head balance it out with a certain thing mm. whether it's salt whether it's you know acid whether it, it's something that you fix that that's a chef can you create a menu can you create food can you fix food can you make things balance over not just one dish yeah all the menu and that's that's what it is and and it's very technical some people take it really personally about the word chef others call everybody chef everyone hold them you, <laughs> you you saw you saw um the bear he oh, called everybody yeah. chef right yes. and so some people have a real problem with that i don't take myself too seriously yeah. call me chef if you want to um but well, it's uh, it's a special chef. term I, w- I would call you chef 
But also, I'm going to go ahead and call myself a chef. Because my wife always comes to fix a plate. Hey, what what is this missing? Pepper. Comes the next day. What is this missing? Pepper. What is this missing? <laughs> I'm just kidding. But yeah, that's, a, that's my answer to everything. Pepper. Pepper's missing. <laughs> no matter what it is. For me, mostly no, it's salt. <laughs> like, any salt. Yeah. Uh, no, pepper's for me a thing. I don't know. Like You know how they say you shouldn't eat too much salt? But nobody ever says you shouldn't eat too much pepper until they start watching me put too much pepper on my plate. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I, I really do think, you know, like you said, some there's cooks that are able to fix, create, uh, and just have these amazing dishes. And, and, and I'm starting to think, yeah, you can teach someone to cook, but you can't necessarily teach someone to be a chef. Like that's just something within you. You can go to school, you can do take classes, you can do all these things. Um, a lot of it is also, are you willing to put in the time, the hours, the days, the years oh, to yeah. become a chef? Like, Everybody it doesn't happen over the year. Oh, dude. The like, mm, getting a certificate from any school, I'm sorry, does not make you a chef. And I love CIA. I love all these, some, you know, I've also worked with a lot of students come in and they think they're going to be on the next, you know, next food network you know guy and they can't they can't cut onions they can't do basic stuff and and you have to do that for hours until you become like you can do it without even thinking and that's just and that takes years to be to do this and and to be able to compete with the the best chefs in any city um that you have to put in the time did you put in the time and not not and nowadays they want it instantly click a button right and get chef no it's 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 months and years and just hours and did you get there early do you know yourself enough to get there early enough to complete this dish by 11 that's knowing yourself knowing your ability and you get here at 10 are you a one hour chef can you do that probably not (laughs) i'm I'm gonna say right now (laughs) can't and they're like oh i ran out of time yeah because you didn't give yourself enough time yeah i'm I'm up at five you know i'm i'm I'm, i know what it takes to 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 develop whatever flavor i want I, i have to give myself the time i think everybody needs to give themselves the time to get better and to be able to actually earn that chef title yeah can I ask a stupid question now that we're talking about sure. chefs? Is a chef ha- a real thing, and why is it a thing? No, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I, you know, obviously I've never worked at a place like that. Um, it's a presentation thing. It, you know, there's a status. There's, you know, the coats and, and all that stuff. And, you know, we're in Texas, man. It's hot. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, uh, you know, and a lot of chefs right now don't want to wear hats anymore. You know, they didn't want, you know, they, they don't want to. And uh, so I think it was a thing for years. It was kind of a status thing, but not anymore yeah okay because that, that is uh, like a very stereotypical thing of, of, of chefs like where if, even if they make like a cartoon of a chef they got the big yeah. old chef's hat uh, yeah. and that's what everybody at least i grew up thinking um oh that's a chef because he's got the hat or it's a uniform <laughs> that makes sense okay i thought of that on the way here and uh since we were talking about it it was like perfect timing um but so with uh with, with sangria what um what um what was it the, has there is there anything on the menu that you would say oh this came out of a of a mistake or something i wasn't i wasn't writing up uh in my head and then created was it something that just a happy accident i guess oh man um probably the chicken vet of the taco it was it was never meant to be like kind of a thing we did. Okay, well, what if we did kind of a play on an enchilada and a taco and something that we can do fast? And it was one of those things that we, okay, this this will be fast to scoop and serve. Obviously, lunch you got to be fast. You know, you have to be super fast. And it's become like one of our most popular taco. And we just oh. like, yeah, we someone had a good salsa verde. We, we shredded some chicken. It was just like, oh, uh, I really was like, ah. Eh man people come in just for that taco and you never knew you never know what's gonna hit yeah. it'd be the funniest thing that you think this steak and egg taco is gonna be like you know you spend a lot of money on it you know it's, it's you don't sell any a you shut up yeah something fun you know yeah. frog wow you can do endless things on it right and you think oh this is gonna hit like yeah. you know i spent all this time i whatever i cooked this thing overnight i was you know, i did all these steps and you no. sell none, man. And it's so frustrating. You're like, oh, man, I spent all that time on this. And then you shred some chicken and put some salsa better than it. <laughs> and you can't make enough of it. So that that's interesting um, that you never know what's going to be that gem. You know, you really don't. So keep trying, right? Is there anything, and if you're not comfortable sharing, you don't have to, but 
Is there anything that's not on the menu anymore that you really felt passionate about? Oh man, you know, honestly, like I really love like boil a uh, grabon, you know, like 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 just grilled chicken, mm-hmm. and it. I feel like. I make a really good one. It's awesome. Like it's everybody that has like, dude, you got to put that on the menu. But on the menu, it doesn't sell. It's the weirdest thing. And you're like, you know, and the timing of it is really precise. For me, like everything's about timing, right? You're putting heat on something for so long. Mm. That chicken is perfect for a short period of time. Mm. Perfect. Really good. Yeah. Then like every whatever minutes, it's like it's good then it, then it's okay yeah. and then, then it's uh, and then it's poor you know so um you have to sell it yeah. and there are certain things that you know i love doing that and i would love to do a restaurant that's just always just just does that we just do chicken because it's one of my favorite things and i guess it's kind of growing up you know it's what, it's what we could afford yes. you know a small family you know you you can always afford a chicken yes. and so um that's one thing that i you know i tried it on sunday nights try to push it i pushed it real hard we sold like none. <laughs> <laughs> I gave away more than I sold, but um, but you try things and you and you. Uh, I still think I still think it's amazing. And anybody that had it, they're like, "Whoa, yeah. that, was, that was great." No, I, I love. I do love like chicken al carbon like that. I when love it's it. like when it's got like the burnt on on yep. the top of it, it's the best thing. It reminds me of summer, like it, mm-hmm. uh, like you said, it's the, what we could afford uh, when we were younger. For us, it was chicken and fajitas, which is nowadays buying fajitas is like crazy expensive. And I'm like, I remember when that was the cheapest thing to buy. Very expensive and very hard to find good ones. Yes. Like very hard to find. Like I've, we love fajitas. I love fajitas. Yeah. It's kind of my go-to too. It's fast. Everybody loves it. It's a very, that, that fajita catering, you know, we have a little fajita plate. Mm. Everybody's happy, right? Chicken person's happy. Beef person's happy. I always do the vegetables on the side. They can do a vegetable taco, uh, you know, vegetable taco, whatever. Um, super hard to find really good fajitas. Yes. They really is. And now nowadays they seem like it should be super thin. Chewy. Like if I buy mil- milanesa. I don't, I'm not sure yeah. what, what that is in English, but uh, that really thin steak. Um, yeah, it's like so thin. It's like I remember when they were fat and, and, and yeah, affordable. So, uh, so fajitas... You know, a lot of them, uh, places that are good and all that. And now, now you see prices of fajitas are crazy. Like, I've mm-hmm. got one, um, it was like $55 for a pound of fajitas. And it, it was good, don't get me wrong. It wasn't bad, but it, it wasn't $55 good. It was kind of yeah. crazy that it was that much. But they, they take for that. For $55, I can invite my tios and Everybody, and everybody. <laughs> and you know, but they also take this, this, this meat that's actually a flank, which mm. is not a tender piece. It's used constantly. And they put it in a tumbler. And the tumbler has like little hooks, almost like a dryer mm-hmm. with hooks. And it like stretches the meat and tenderizes. Oh, well, we don't have okay. one at your house, right? You right no, no. I don't have one. Uh-uh. Um, so you got to find ways to make this product very tender and that's what you know in america we like flavor is 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 very important but tenderness is number one yeah. and so and that's just kind of how we think about steaks right we think about oh man this thing cuts like butter butter knife mm-hmm. you know um season it well and all that but you know other let's say new zealand you know where, where the, you know, the, the the there's a lot of green grasses and they eat on that meat god it's 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 not a center yeah by far like it's not even close but the flavor on the meat is more is more important so we uh we love tender fajitas and oh i love cooking like that i love things you know that we put on we put on the menu like that but it's hard to find it and for people to afford it now yeah because in their head because i don't think fajitas should be expensive right right we grew up like that we grew up it's kind of you know almost like peasants food what is expensive now yeah and the general public is like why am i paying this much for fajitas well because this is how much it costs and if i don't charge that much i'm not going to make any money on it but there's a lot of products like that right now that we have to charge a certain amount for that the public isn't ready for and so that's that's been a struggle that's been a struggle in our industry right now that's a huge problem yeah because you guys are paying so much for mm-hmm. excuse me for um for whatever you know product you're buying but then you have to resell it but not yeah like so I, i'm I'll, I'll, I'll admit I'm one of those people who are like, oh, it's a little too pricey for me. I don't think I'm going to get it. Or I'll come to the restaurant once a, once a month or once mm. every so many months just because I know it's a little more pricey. Uh, and uh, and uh, this is just in general talk, not, not talking about sangria. No, in uh, general, I, just in general. I'm an eater too. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I get it. But uh, uh, we don't take into account that. Like We know what we're buying at HB or wherever. And say, okay, well, I can't afford that, but I can afford this. But then we come out to a restaurant. like, I remember I was paying seven bucks earlier, you know. And I've seen those people. I've seen people that go to like the like 
like you get your breakfast tacos and yeah the tacos have gone up a little bit uh and people are acting like they're losing their mind it, it's it's a little bit in a lot of places so if you if you're if your tea went up 25 cents and 50 cents and then your taco went up you know a dollar or whatever and then this went up so after a while like you are paying a lot mm. more i'll be honest with you like i always wanted for this to be a week uh once a week place you know, i want to be very easy i want you know i wanted to charge this much because i wanted people i want it to be fun and lively and a very easy decision to come here well, every, some things are triple the price. Yeah. Some things are triple the price. If you really think about that, your your twenty thousand dollar car is now sixty thousand dollars. Oh, that's hard. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. especially for you know. But your sixty thousand dollar <laughs> car is now one hundred eighty thousand dollars. Like, do that. Think about that. Well, we can't do that with food. So my my tacos are this much. I can't so a four dollar taco. I can't charge twelve. Right. Now I'm gonna have to charge about six. Mm. And I'm still not doing well financially. Yeah. But people are mad. People are mad that they have to pay that. Um, but all we're doing is is adjusting just to, trying the, to keep, just trying to keep up with with the numbers. I think a lot of it also is like everything else around us is going up, but our paychecks are not. Yeah. <laughs> and that's definitely something that you know, um, that that I I think people that's where people feel that that struggle. Is, um, I'm in, right there included. Yeah. Um, but what I, what I do also see is that, or what I've noticed a little bit, and this is just for me, I don't know if other people are noticing that as well, but going out to the grocery store versus going out to eat, it's almost the same thing now, right now. It was like, where I remember my, my mom would say, for that, I'll cook at home. For that, I'll cook at home. Yeah. It's like, I'll go to the store and cook at home, because it would be cheaper to cook at home. But sometimes nowadays, I feel like it's not. Like I'll go to the I go to the grocery store and pay a hundred bucks or more a hundred and fifty on stuff that I really is not gonna feed me for two days. So that's 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 a little frustrating. But also, I use that as an excuse to come out and eat. <laughs> I I have to say, being in this industry, obviously a consumer, and going to a H E B more than I think anybody in San Antonio, <laughs> I go there a lot. Um, life has gotten expensive. Like in general, you know, um, gas, uh, do even I put oil in the other day, like, you know, it was this much. And now it was like, it was literally like 30 or $40 more. And I'm like, Whoa, hey, my guy, <laughs> Hey, what's going on? Yeah. And, um, he's like, Hey man, this, this is any kind of like, this is what it is now. Like, <laughs> Oh damn. Okay. And so like little things, like little things that just add up everywhere you go, like every, everybody. So there's a lot, there's less money to go out. You know, I got to think the average person that went out, you know, every day is maybe going out every week the person who went every week is going out once a month and and that's twofold because that makes that one time you go out extremely mm. important to you right like mentally yeah. like you need this yep. release and you need it to be perfect and you need it to be you know, if it's my once a month it better be good you know yes. and so and the truth is we're also paying for employees that aren't the same we're paying more for employees mm -hmm. so now you're you know no one will work for less less than x amount well also a lot of those employees like let's say a cook wants you know so much an hour can they cook to that level well, no right there's a lot of people you hire that just can't do the job but they they will not work for less than this this amount anymore and so you're having the consumer that is the prices have to go on the menu prices have to go up to afford that to afford now the new level of of the cost of goods and the level of the labor mm -hmm. and they're getting a product that wasn't as good because we don't have the cooks anymore like we used to we don't have the products hey i'm getting yeah. less product for more money yeah. yeah and all of us yeah. are doing that right I, I bought this little lotion right it, it it's it used to be eleven dollars now it's 14 and the bottom the it's bottle's smaller. smaller yeah and so like whoa so i'm getting i'm paying more i'm getting less and in the industry that's what everybody's doing they might buy a, a chicken you know chicken burger or whatever and then, oh it's a little smaller now like oh it's like when i'm paying more like it pisses people off like it makes people mad everybody gets mad yeah. and we you know even so, so we have a whole another generation post pandemic whole another generation of cooks that a lot of them can't cook, you know, um, or learning to. or learning to ser servers, you know, that, that maybe haven't served anymore. I've had some servers that have never been to a sit down restaurant ever. This is a YouTube generation. Right? I'm sorry, YouTube. Um, 
Um, That's all right. Uber, like we're on YouTube, but yeah. <laughs> Uber Eats generation, right? Where yeah. they're, 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 they get food delivered to the oh, house. Oh yeah, yes. they're not. They mm-hmm. haven't experienced good service. They haven't gone to a restaurant that has that has taught them what good service is. Yes. I or the food too, because you uh, you know what? Like the, when the food comes out of the kitchen, it goes straight to the table. Uh, it's it doesn't lose like you said that amount of time mm-hmm. when it starts from perfect to like good to like okay fast but when it's going to through through these deliveries they're taking forever so by the time they get to your place they're soggy or they're just not the same quality like, eh. it's still good but yeah. it's not yeah it's not quality coming straight to the table so then yeah i do i mean I've, i i'm guilty of ordering and i'm like oh, this wasn't great but I know, like I, I, at least for me, I know it's not going to be as good as coming to the restaurant and eating at the restaurant. Um, but sometimes I get lazy, and then that's no. Know. We all do it. I think everybody does it. But I think you know, in the delivery fees, the these little. I remember, I, I got, I don't know, like, we got four salads from a place, and it was almost eighty dollars. Like, yeah. I was being good. <laughs> I was trying to be good. I was trying to eat a salad and be healthy. I'm like, what the hell? I spent 80 bucks. And so, but that that's the reality. So you get kind of like, I mean, that kind of makes people mad. So when they come, if it's not perfect, if it's their one time a month, mm-hmm. their date night or whatever, and it's not perfect, like... It, I've seen people really react because it, it was their special time. Yeah. So it's become more special because you have less money to spend and you're coming out to, to have this one great night, right? I'm going to do it again next month, but this is this is our, this is our a special night. And it's been hard to meet those expectations because, like, the food is more expensive and everything's more expensive and we're just trying to keep up with 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 not making more money and so a lot of people think oh you raise money you're selfish like, no i'm, I'm just that's, i'm yeah, just that's trying to exactly, stay alive that's the go-to but yeah but um but i, I would think you do have a, a a good clientele that understands you know the change uh or even you know even though i complain or yeah, in the moment i know like what's the what's the change that's happening um so I'm not I'm not one to like, hey, tell the chef this is more expensive. Now I'm like, ah, oh, you know, in my head silently, and then I'll go, well, it is what it is. Like uh, times are changing, um, but you know, when people do come out, there's more of the enjoyment versus the the big gruddle. I don't even know that's a word. That's probably not even a word. It sounded like a word. I, I know it's just make it a word. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, because like, I don't want to be like, oh no, times are changing. Just kind of like be angry about it. Um, yeah, I, I still enjoy it. I still come out to places uh, and enjoy the food. So I'm sure you have people that come out and they understand it's gonna be a little pricey. But again, like you said, it's it's their one time of the week or one yeah. time, and we still have the one time of the days, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. So you know, but it's enjoyable. It's still it's nicer. And something about eating with other people, like even though like I'm not a big crowd person, I still like it. You know, kind of like we're all enjoying. You see, other people like, oh, this is what, it, and I do it. Or like, I pass by the table, like, oh, what does this guy have? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I'm gonna get that. What was that? What yeah. Was that? What was that? <laughs> so no, I'm also, also that. being served. You know, it, it's nice to, to be treated, and it's nice to be to be served. And um, and you know, we're in the service industry, right? We're, we're that's what we do. We 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 make um, people's moments of time here great. Right. So um, I just think it's it's for for our industry. We have to understand that that um, every single moment table is is important. It's a special time for them. It's a lot special than it used to be. Yeah. You know, oh, and, yeah. and we have to understand that as 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 restaurateurs, as, as service industry workers, that that this might be their one time. Like go above and beyond, like really make them happy. Um, and and um, as a team, we have to understand that. Yeah. Now, um that's that's good that people understand that because you know every now and then well i'm not even gonna go there but we all have had that one experience where it's like oh this was kind of ruined my day yeah but oh yeah um, it's easy yeah but i want to focus on that you know it happens <laughs> but it doesn't happen here at sangria on the berg i said it right <laughs> <laughs> um no what i do want to talk about is uh, a little bit of culture and food um i i've gotten to kind of notice that there's been a change a change in palettes maybe there's a lot of now we're all what's the right word without sounding offensive kind of mixing with each other you know yeah. uh and so our flavors are getting in tr- or, or, or our culture flavors are being introduced to other culture flavors and 
I sometimes feel like you. I see that in the restaurants. You know, uh, a person may be, uh, you know, t of, of two different backgrounds, and they're cooking in that sense, and that, that get, it's getting told to where I remember as a kid. You know, you go to a Mexican restaurant, it tastes like a Mexican restaurant. You go to a Chinese restaurant, it tastes like a Chinese restaurant. But nowadays, there's like certain flavors that just mix through. Mm -hmm. um, why do you? Well, you think that at any point anymore, like where we're gonna be able to distinct Mexican Mexican food, Chinese food, American food, uh, or do you think it's all just gonna be well at some point? I guess it's it's where you're from. I guess it's what you're used to because there's there's certain people out there that think Taco Bell is Mexican food, <laughs> yeah. you know, and to certain other people that's offensive right like no like yeah. don't even don't even put in that they don't deliver in, this, in our that's genre late night right <laughs> yeah um so i specifically did not call i'll tell you i'll give you this one but that's too hard too fast food <laughs> yeah <laughs> no i get that you know and, and we all we all do it but it's like okay is that is that part of this you know our culture growing yeah. up because my grandma's food didn't taste like that for yeah. damn sure and so you know it, it's when we've gotten used to but as far as like you know i never wanted sangria to have a genre like i i did la Fonda for a long time and you know I, everything had to be mexican and you know i think it's all kind of where you grow up you you, you kind of try to get away from what you what you had right yeah. you i want to do some french food and i want to do this and i want to do that um you always end up coming back because that flavor is like in your blood mm -hmm. like the the, the flavors of your grandparents' house, the smells, all that, they're like in you. You can't yeah. get them out, even if you try. <laughs> even if you try to do a whole other uh, type of food, no, um, I, that I, influence I, is there. Yes. I, 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 that just reminded me, like, I, I was in Dallas um, just this weekend, and um, I, we walked into, a, it's kind of like the t what would be a Michoacana here, like a, a mm -hmm. Mexican grocery store. Um, but we and we walk in and almost instantly I was at my aunt's house. I was like, "It smells like my aunt's house. Yeah. She's making something good to eat," uh, you know. Um, so it just reminded me. I, mean, I say that because my aunt lived in Mexico, so we would go to her house um, randomly, either in the mornings or uh, in the evenings. And if she was cooking something, it just infused the whole house differently. And I think I think I only noticed that because you know, obviously your house smells like what it smells like and you don't know that it smells different yeah but when you walk into somebody else's you smell that and so they reminded me of that but uh, yeah i can see how like you know when you're cooking something i love when it reminds me of like like family so but, uh, but sometimes i don't know like sometimes i i feel like that's less and less like I, very much so even <laughs> Even in a conversation, which is not in a negative. I said that's no, not a negative, no. But it's not in a negative. It's just, it's just, it, it's, it's, it's where we are, and you know, it's funny. It's a lot like, like this conversation. You called your aunt, your aunt, said your tia, and, oh. and you so <laughs> those, you know, yeah. and and I get it. But it's kind of like, okay, we have this and we're used to this, but let's put a little twist on it because we've learned more. Mm -hmm. And we, we, I've eaten. You've probably eaten at more places than your parents ever have mm -hmm. i know i have oh yep. my god my, you know I travel my dad's like where are you going to boston like to see boston <laughs> Dude, i want to fucking yeah, eat yeah, right yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. i want to go there i want to eat some great food and my my dad's kind of like well, what you going for like to eat yeah. oysters like mm -hmm. <laughs> it's exactly like, literally where i'm going to boston <laughs> and so like my dad wouldn't like right now he's still like he's probably pissed about that because like why are you wasting money like, you know like what are you doing like you don't treat yourself or we yeah. treat ourselves mm -hmm. it's different and so we do things and you know i think that i i love food and i never want to put like boundary on it i never want to so i want to do asian i'm gonna do asian i want to do you know new mexico which they need a lot of help with their food so i want to do new mexico food whatever whatever <laughs> it is i really want to make make sure that i can i can just i can do whatever i want and not have to be one genre anymore i think it's a lot of chefs we're, we're heavily most chefs asian is their go-to it's it's big flavors it's umami it's like mm -hmm. that's the we need that mm -hmm. we need that like oh wow. yeah and so we will always you'll find chefs to always do you know other kinds of soul food i love soul food you know you know i, I know i make some stuff and some of my some of my uh my uh friends out there like 
Chef, what are you doing? You know, <laughs> doing a collard green for the like, oh. Yeah, man. And they're like, I gotta try this. And you know, some people that would think, be interesting. think it's it's interesting. wrong of yeah. me to do that. You know, I don't really care. Um, I love the fact that I'm learning. I'm really good at that cuisine too. It's a very it's very fun and very very home cooked meal cuisine um but i've never uh, i never tried to be one genre and i've always honestly the opposite i've tried to learn other genres every chance i get if i haven't tried the mediterranean boom let's do some mediterranean let's have some fun with it um it expands my palate and people and if i really do it well and i learn a lot like people really love it so yeah now that makes total sense and um i love the fact that like being a because because you know what if it doesn't work then it doesn't go on the menu or it doesn't go on the plate and if it does work then you're a genius right yep yep <laughs> it is like that right yep. go for two you're 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 the smartest guy <laughs> in the world or you're a dumbass yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but it's, it's trial and error and you know if you don't try you don't you don't learn oh. and you don't create and that's the, that's the best thing which reminded me to something you said earlier um uh, about creating dishes, uh, a chef can create dishes. Is is you? Th- Sometimes I think about musicians. Like how how can they still create songs? Like I feel like everything has been sung about, you know. So to almost things like, how does a chef create a new dish? It seems like it's it's everything's been created, but I, it's, they're still surprising. I I, I relate us. You know, I have some musician friends, and I, and I, I like to write. So I, I'll, I'll write some songs for a while and, t- and send them out to them, whether it be rap or, or country or whatever. So, hey, man, I'm thinking about this. Here, send it out. I was like, what are you doing, man? Like, because it is, I, I relate a lot to musicians. Mm-hmm. I relate the struggle, the, the years of not being known, and then you're known, and, you know, like, you know, oh, where have you been? And like, I've been doing this for 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> so, or you're like, you made it. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't make it overnight, man. It took me 20 <laughs> years to make it. Yeah, yeah. Same thing with me. It took me 20 years to, to make it, you know, to, to be, you know, my, my own person in this industry. Um, so I don't know. I think, I you know, I think of a dish for, for weeks before. And by the time I told you I haven't tasted a lot of stuff, by the time I actually make that dish, it's like, dude, how are you coming? It's like, well, I've been thinking about it for weeks. Now it's just, now I'm just executing it. it yeah. It's done. I've tasted it. I made it 10 times in my head already. I know what's going to work. I know exactly how, how much I'm going to make and all this stuff. And um, so I think you just think about food constantly. I, I, I've met some people that are really good at this game that they don't give it the attention it deserves, it needs. And you have to be thinking about food constantly. And now I am now I write it down. I used to not write it down. But now I write it down on my phone, <laughs> my phone or I text it to my chef here and say, hey, we're going to do this. Or, oh, man. That sounds cool. And we keep the, I let them influence it a little bit and we make a dish. So I think just like musicians, like if you're just constantly writing, Bouncing constantly ideas, hoping, yeah, people, okay, this yeah. might work. And then you find the day, hey, Thanksgiving, turkey burger, man, we've been thinking about this for a month. Now, now Wednesday, we're going to execute it. So that, that, that kind of thing that we, that I constantly think about it till I have it perfect. And then not everything makes it out. Yeah. Sometimes I forget, you know, <laughs> I forget what I was doing. I was like, what was I doing? Um, but it, I think you have to be a weeks ahead, days ahead, weeks ahead, um, thinking of, okay, you know, peach cheese is coming. Can't wait to make a barbecue sauce with that. Like, so you start learning all your, you know, your fish when fish are in season. You start learning all this stuff. Like, I can't wait to do that again in the mm-hmm. summer, you know. Oysters will be available here. So you, you learn all that, and you, and you can start kind of uh, getting excited about making something new. That's interesting. Um, that's crazy, too. Like, it's just like to even think about, Christmas in June. <laughs> yep. right. You have to. You have to be ahead. You, have, you really do. Um, your marketing aspects and all that, you have to be a good marketer too. Okay. I have, you know, this coming up then. I want to drop this menu then. I need to get an influencer here and this. And you really have to have to have all those things in line because if you don't get the influencer, they're booked and then your menu drops and then no one sees it because mm-hmm. I didn't get it out there. Right. So all these things that, you know, th- oh yeah, I got that, got that got the one in August. Yeah. Like, wow. I booked that in August for December. Like, and if you don't, you're going to regret it. Yeah. I've learned that. I've learned that if you don't think about the dead times and think about the times, because we are seasonal, there's times where it's dead. If you don't really get ahead of that, you're going to wish you did it in that time. When it's, oh, man. Now I did some, you know, I've, I've learned, but I've learned through years of doing this, yeah. too. So Again, trial and error. Trial and error. Um, I, I learned, on, you know, other people's dime for a long time, too. As you're, as you're working for someone else, it, it's like a free, it's like a paid education. 
you're getting paid to learn yeah you know and don't forget don't forget these these lessons and hey you're gonna mess up remember that too <laughs> remember what worked <laughs> remember what yeah yeah i mean so many times i made mistakes or didn't do this or did like don't forget those 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 uncostly for you at that moment mistakes because when it's your money yeah cost then it's a, gonna lot. Cost yeah, you're gonna, a lot more. you're gonna regret it yes, so yes. no that makes sense listen um I've, I've enjoyed my time i'm keeping you a little bit uh too long i'm gonna get out of here because i know you're about to open up soon um we open at 11. oh okay so, well, they're here early yeah <laughs> hi guys we open at 11. Oh. sorry Okay, but also uh, that way you guys have time to finish up. Um, but I appreciate your time, and we're gonna—I'm gonna end with the too hard, too fast story. But before we uh, go there, Sangria on the Berg is located at Fredericksburg here in San Antonio. But what's the address? It's a uh, five one one five Fredericksburg Road. Instagram. Uh, Sangria on the Berg. Sangria on the Berg. Okay. Berg. Berg. <laughs> Very uh, simple. But. Uh, um, so your too hard too fast story. It's a funny story uh, that may have happened to you with the restaurant or opening up any restaurant. Um, a cautionary tale or words of wisdom, whatever you feel comfortable sharing. Um, man, I, I I shouldn't have said that earlier because that was my story. <laughs> um, so now I'm a little stuck. Um, you can say words of wisdom. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so my cautionary tale. You know, this industry, is, it's, it's a very, very fun thing, right? You're around people all the time, and you're, you're, uh, you're interjecting with people. And a lot of people want a restaurant. A lot of people do. And a lot of people, you know, come to me to start a restaurant with me. Um, they see me work, and they like the way I work. Well, one thing I want to say that this is not a, a retirement plan. <laughs> this is not, and so many people come after they've made you know a lot of money doing this and a lot of money doing this. Like, like if you're not ready to work, and I'm gonna say be young, but but be energetic and be able to work. Um, this is definitely not for someone that 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 wants to not come to work every day yeah like it, i think it's the opposite i think i think it's something that uh, you have to heavily uh ask yourself if if you're ready for this life yeah. um it's hard on your family like be very honest with you very hard on your family very hard on your kids very hard on you know a lot of times you know for the first three years i was here day and night every single day every single night um almost obsessed right you know and i think it takes obsession it's just i i relate to musicians i relate to athletes i relate to all those people because like if you aren't obsessed you're not gonna win michael jordan didn't shoot all those shots he's it's not michael jordan right. you know so i might uh, realize like like that's what it takes the level of dedication is higher than you'll ever think and you have to have a spouse that understands that too um your kids are born into it but they have to understand it too like you know when when you're home with your family make it special even if it's a tuesday night doesn't matter yeah. doesn't have to be a friday night doesn't have to be whatever um so you kind of in this industry you give up a lot you usually work on your birthday you usually work holidays are just a day off to take a nap because you're so tired from working before <laughs> and after so all that has to really be you know if you want to get in this industry and you know people in this industry you probably know their schedule and you know it's really really hard so um you know also like i think it's very important you know, if you're going to get in this industry and you're going to do this and this is what you want to do, like to understand that it takes a long time. I, I went the route of working with Lisa, working with Bruce, working with Cappy. That was not a little route. That was about a 15 year route, you know, and to, to be able to be ready to do this. So yeah. if you aren't willing to, to work for someone else and, and put in the years to be a chef or a restaurateur or a GM, whatever, like you're, you're probably shouldn't be in this industry now I, I talk most people out of doing it you know yeah. to be honest you want to come talk to me about it cool I'll, you know i mentored a lot of people um i know who has it i know who doesn't a lot of them i'll tell them i don't think this is for you right no right. i don't think if you were a lawyer all this time like you're not ready for this like this yeah. is hard even if you have you know a good partner which is really really hard like that uh having two people that is willing to put in the energy and and change their lifestyle for this a lot of people don't want to change their lifestyle so um just caution caution to people that that want to do this and really really think work for somebody else first right. and 
see how many hours and then imagine even if you're even if you're a small level imagine the hours that they put in yes and like oh on your feet physical like your my my feet hurt sometimes <laughs> you know your whole body hurts yeah, you know, it's bet. a very physical job um mentally and, and and draining and now with with the pandemic and realizing what we're going through with costs and all that like be honest with you probably would tell people most people this isn't a good time to enter the restaurant industry. No. Um, I don't think, as you've seen, as we've all seen, um, a lot of restaurants aren't here anymore. No, oh, yeah. Uh, I think it's going to get even worse, yeah. you know, because costs are extremely high. Those straws that went up three times never came back down. The brisket that went up this oh, right. never came yes. back down. Um, the prices went up, and we're all we blamed everything on the pandemic. We blamed everything on the supply chain. We blamed everything on this stuff, but they've never come back down, and I don't think they are. Yeah. You know, because I know now. Now they say that people were willing to pay yeah. for that. So um, now we got to stop paying for it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, I, it's. I think there's actually it's not, not a bad idea. <laughs> you know, I, I do. I, I, I do think. You know, there's only a few of restaurants that will actually survive for the next few years, um, if something doesn't happen. Right. That's that's in our favor. Um, and so, if you have a favorite restaurant, I got. I gotta say, go go to it. I don't yeah support i think that's you know it's easy to get in the chick-fil-a line it's easy to get in the you know the you know in, in canes or whatever line, the fast yeah. food line yeah. it's, it's easy right that's very easy well um a little bit of effort to keep you know somebody's business open i think is very important I, and i'm 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 saying we don't want it we need it yeah like or else they're not going to be here anymore. You know, if, if, you know, I remember, was it Judge Dredd? Like, all restaurants are Taco Bell. Um, that might be the truth. And not too long from now, all restaurants going to be fast food because lo- smaller businesses can't keep up. We don't have the buying power. We don't have multiple units to do it. I have one. Yeah. And I'm paying premium on one. We don't get a huge price break because I don't have enough small place to, to make the price big so they need your support um not just saying us oh, your local coffee shops your all your 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 local businesses like really get out there and support them um because you know if you know just like hgb like we all go there yeah we really don't have much more options right well prices are high now because mm-hmm. we have no options yeah so don't you know if we continue to do that for your food your food choices then i think there won't be very option then you're going to be paying high prices for fast food yes yeah. it's going to happen so support and and help us out and help us make sure that we're still here for y'all and and uh we'll see how how sangria fights this fight we've been fighting it for a long time man pandemics i'm surprised we're still here man like the pandemic was rough and yeah. we're open 25 percent, and we somehow we weathered the storm as a lot of the public a lot of the people wanting us to be here so um so and not just that yes the public wants you to be here but it also has to be with you know starting with your employees starting with your drive the people that are, are working at to keep it here and then the food if you don't have the food uh, uh and by, by that i mean like quality that people enjoyed yep then it wouldn't stick around uh, well. so uh, it, it's a testament to everything people that support you uh, the people that work with you for you and then also the product that you're putting out so that's not it's not just that means you're doing something good okay oh, can i can I, sh- can I end with a story oh yeah so during that pandemic um so this is probably not a funny story. Like I look back at it now, it's kind of it was it was very interesting that things like this happened. But I got to a point where I was actually like, first time ever, I wasn't gonna make payroll. True story. I was like, look at my account, payroll is this much, the account <laughs> level is this much, you know, open twenty five percent, mainly doing to goes. We just weren't weren't bringing it, you know. And so I was short four thousand dollars. Didn't know what I was gonna do. Started looking at, okay, man, this person has dual income. Like, you know, I'm like, I'm like I can give them a little bit less and they'll, they can wait till next week. And like the people that only have one, you know, really like making these yeah. hard decisions. Like, what am I going to, I've never been in this situation. Obviously not paying myself. I didn't pay myself a lot for a long time. Um, I think my, God, my wife's a sugar mama, right? Because uh, if it wasn't for that, it, <laughs> honestly, it would be extremely yeah. hard. Um, so... I was looking at it just oh man like and just check double checking to make sure it was right and then i have this guy that we cook for cook for his family and um cook for his mom's his, his mother-in-law's well, special events his wife's bunch of events so he's like hey buddy and, and so i have two phones right he's like hey buddy um it's been a while mother-in-law's birthday coming up want to blow it up you know what she likes budget's four thousand i already sent it to you and then this <laughs> this phone goes off boom, with the money and so things like that happen, and you say, like, 
keeping keeping people here. Um, sorry. Somebody wanted us here, so sorry. No, no, you're good, man. So somehow things like that happen over and over. Uh, I was I was delivering literally delivering food. All good. And somebody said, "Hey, chef, why are you delivering your food?" It's like, "I'm the food deliverer tonight." This, you know, during the pandemic, we delivered a lot of food. Like, we didn't have a we didn't have a driver, right? So, deliver food, and and they took a picture of me. They posted it, and then uh, KSAT or um, KSAT picked it up. It's like, "Hey, you never know who's going to be at your door delivering food." I took a picture. Well. We took a picture with them in the, with the pandemic, you know, yeah. and then of course, every, so many people said, uh, "Don't be taking pictures together because of the <laughs> pandemic." And so, because of that, Coca Cola saw it. You know, they posted it. It's like, "Hey, chefs are delivering food to your door. You never know who you're gonna be." Yada yada. And so then Coca Cola picked up. It was like, "Hey, we want to help y'all. We got, we got, you know, I want a delivery of 200 meals every week for the next whatever." So a lot of things helped us still be here. Yeah. So um, I want to thank them. No, for sure. That's. That's amazing, um, and that that's that right there. I mean, <laughs> don't apologize for that. That is, that means you care. Like it's, the passion's there. You know, this is. I can't imagine putting the all the work that has to go into this, and then something nobody planned for, and you're out doing something else that you didn't think you were gonna do, and then people people saw it and people cared. Man, it was crazy times, but also a lot of times where people. Minus the crazy of the of the separation that came from it, how people came to uh, together to help others, yeah, and not really help themselves, it's help others. We're we're on the side of the road, and eighteen wheelers from from Coke would come by, and we'd give them a, a lunchbox and a Coke, <laughs> things, right? a truck full of Coke. We give them a Coke and a lunchbox, and that's what we're doing. We're literally on the side of the road because it was pandemic, and they would open the window. We give it to them like we did that for so long, and little little things like that. You know, people want to feed the hospital. Like, hey, four hundred meals for this, and we're like, oh my god, thank you so much. And it might have just been sandwiches or something stupid, right? Yeah. But it was like, thank you, man. Like, like thank you. So those little things, like, um, I, I just, I, I guess if, if you, even if you think you're not helping, you're helping. Yeah. We don't realize that one meal at your restaurant helps so much one times bunch but like that one time go to your even if it's once a month once a week whatever um that one meal helps you know those 400 meals 200 meals like th- those those save me like we would not be here 100 yeah. percent. you know the the governor going to alcohol to go you know people buying gallons of sangria a gallon of sangria was 40 bucks but like at that, that time i was like oh thank you so much yeah. like you don't realize like I, like how much you can help so help yeah, no, beautiful story. I kind of, I don't want to say anything else other, other because I feel like I will ruin that. <laughs> um, that's amazing, man. I, it's it's good to hear stuff like that, um, and this is why I do this. Like I, I can't believe, um, people. I feel like stuff like that needs to get out, and the whole thing is like helping others and being in support of, of what they're doing. The struggles that they've gone through and sharing the successes so you know i'm glad you guys are here that's awesome man. thank you cheers i appreciate <laughs> you man no man thanks for uh, being here uh, no problem man we've gone too hard too fast uh jerry be you jerry be weird bye sorry no no that was perfect that, that's that's good stuff that's real stuff. I appreciate that.